All right, so this is Overpower. Uh, this is a game that, uh, as I outlined in the other video earlier, that this is a game that I absolutely love. It allows you to recreate uh, these great battles with Marvel characters, uh, DC Marvel comic book characters. So I'm going to walk you through a basic gameplay turn flow and how that works, setup included. So this is my deck. It's a 60 card deck, and I just prefer to walk through 60 card decks on average. Um, just because I think that there's just enough, um, it's just big enough you can fit what you want, but at the same time, um, it's also going to be small enough that you get what you want uh, quicker and get through this quicker. So, here's your deck. Now, what you're going to have, and when you have said, first thing you pull out is your characters, which here I have uh, Professor X, 8217, Spawn, and 8733. Brainiac at 8147 and X-Men. Now what you're going to do, usually when you build the deck, you're going to know who you want to have in reserve. Um, as you can tell, this has a theme where every character has an 8 energy, so they're going to be, you know, on average, really big characters. So that's what I'm doing. So uh, I've got here these character cards. It looks like there may be a little bit of glare, but we'll work with it. Okay. So, uh, with this being my high, my other high intellects being here, and my other high fighting, I want these guys on the front line. So, the ones you put on the front line, you're gonna put side by side like this. And then your reservist, if you don't have any locations, your reservist generally go like about here. So, direct behind your middle front line character usually. Uh, if it's not, if you have, uh, any kind of uh, location cards, then what you're going to usually end up doing is you're going to take that location card, you're going to shift this slightly to the left here with your reserve character, and you're going to put in the location right over here to the right and have it like that. That's generally what people will do. Um, now this location that I have is, again, this location is a, um, it's a location I'm acting in as a home base. Again, it could be either way, home base. And then, once you have that set up, your, your first part of the setup, then you're going to go ahead and grab here your uh, mission set. So you see here, this deck that I love to play with, this mission, shet, mission set, I'm sorry, is Shattered Image. Uh, and it's going to be numbered, as you can see back here, uh, 1 through 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, descending order, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 on the bottom, 1 on the top in that order, and these will go right here, generally speaking, like that. So I'm going to shift this over just slightly, close it up, make it a little bit tighter. All right, and that's it. That's the you know, general setup. You're going to take your deck, now that you've set up, and you're going to go ahead and shuffle. Now, if you have a battle site, which I don't have, I have I'm using this location as a home base, if that's the case, if that's what you've got, then, sorry, one sec, I'm going to shuffle. And, there we go. All righty, I'm just shuffling away. This will be my start here. Okay. All right. So I've got this started. I'm going to give it one more good shuffle. And I got it. So here you go. It shuffled. Put that. You're going to need to have room for three different discard piles. You're going to need to have room for a your draw deck. So I'm going to squish this in even more, so we have more room here. But your draw deck, you're going to have here, and that generally sits right around here on most locations. Most players generally put it around there. All right, so what you're going to be dealing with, again, this is all a little bit scrunched. Uh, if you had a, a larger table area, surface area, you'd be dealing with that. Uh, you're going to have your... Uh, dead heroes pile, so characters, I uh, can't see it, I'm sorry, but 
and it's going to be off to the left, immediately to the left here. That would be your dead heroes pile. That is KO'd hero, so heroes that get knocked out will go there. In addition, also any event cards will go there. Any event cards that have been uh, drawn and discarded, drawn and then discarded and or used. Then your two main discard piles are up here. Uh, usually over here you have the dead pile, which is specials, universe cards, activators, those cards all go here. Uh, and then right here immediately is your power pack, and that's where all your power cards go when used. After use, I'm sorry. And that's how it's going to go. Uh, I'm going to shift this for just a little bit more room. But uh, we will start. So I'm all set up. When it's set up, you decide randomly who starts. Uh, let's assume that I'm starting. Both players will now draw eight cards. I'll draw eight from the top of my draw deck. And that was, actually I'm gonna reshuffle because that was a really bad shuffle. I don't think I shuffled this, this since the last time I played it. So I am gonna shuffle again because that was really bad. So let me try this again. Okay. Alrighty. So, I'm shuffling here, shuffling here, and we're going to shuffle again here. So again, I apologize. That was a bad start, not what I wanted. Okay. Let's try that again. All right. So draw eight cards. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And that is a really good draw. All right, so here's my hand. As you can see, I got a variety of different cards. And the first thing you do when you draw your hand, and your opponent draws your hand, uh, you're going to first of all, when it's your turn, you're going to first of all discard duplicates and unusables. Now, duplicates are simple in terms of non-power cards. Uh, duplicates for non-power cards, so specials, for example, or uh, teamworks, for example, uh, they're gonna be duplicates only if they're exactly the same card. So that means title, uh, title name on there, uh, all of that. So it's gonna be exactly the same to count it as a duplicate. Power cards are different. Power cards are duplicates by value only. So what that means is if I had, and I'll pull these out here, likely I don't have any duplicate power cards on this draw. They are actually, it's a very solid draw. I'm actually very happy with it. <laughs> I could have been playing and then gained this one. Okay, so I'm gonna sort them out because it's simpler that way. Okay. All right, so I drew my, all right, so as you can see, it's uh, power cards, doesn't matter what type it is, it's by value. So if I had two threes, let's say I had a three energy, and this level three multi-power, let's say they were the same value, but they're different power types, this is what we call multi-power, and this is called an energy type. Um, so they're different types, but if this was a three, then I would have to discard one of these two cards because as far as power cards are considered, they are considered duplicates. But luckily for me, as you can see, I have no duplicates in, in, on any front. I have a level three multi-power, a level five multi-power, a six energy, an eight energy, uh, a fighting teamwork, two specials for spawn, which if you look, as you can see, there are two different specials, so they're not duplicates, and Brainiac is a, again, not a duplicate. It's a special, not a copy in the hand. All right, so once you've determined that you have no duplicates, or if you have duplicates, you've discarded, you know, what you can't keep, then you go ahead and look at unusables. So let's say that for some reason I spawn 
let's say for some reason Spawn was not able to attack or had been KO'd, this is let's say later on in the game and it's a new hand, and let's say that Spawn had been KO'd, okay? So if you look at the stats here on this character, Spawn, he's got a seven fighting, okay? So he, and he's my only character that has seven fighting. So, let's say that he had been KO'd, and this is a new hand that I'm doing the same practice. Let's say this was my exact hand, and this was the middle of the game. So I could still use all of these cards that are power cards, because I still have someone with an eight energy. That means I can use the six and the eight power card, and I can use the three and the five multi-power, because they could be any type as long as they meet the value. The, uh, they any type and played by any character, as long as the type, the level that they want to play is high enough in the type that you want to make it at that time. I know that sounds confusing, um, but uh, bottom line, this is, none of these power cards are unusable. So, I'm keeping these. Uh, Brainiac is still active, so it's not unusable. I can keep that. Now, here's what would be the difference in this hand if, if Spawn was KO'd. If Spawn was KO'd, none of these three cards would be usable, and I'd have to discard them as unusables. And that means that we're looking at a seven fighting. No one on my team has seven fighting, so I cannot use that. And these are Spawn specials. So if Spawn is KO'd, I cannot use those either. Because those are unusables, I would have to discard these cards. And they, would, since it's not an event card or a KO'd hero, they would go over here to this dead pile. Okay? And that's where they would go. But again, we're, this is, we're going through a turn pull, and this is the beginning of the game. So all of my cards are non-duplicates and usable. So I would be able to keep every card in my hand, all right? So again, you set up, first turn, you draw eight cards, and you're gonna look at your hand. Okay, then you determine who goes first, and the most usual route that I see people use for that is they cut the deck and the highest number of value out of the two players is the one who goes first. So I would just cut it, and I don't, I have a one. So if you see here, this has avoid one attack, so there is a one. Let me make sure you can see that. All right, so it has avoid one attack. So there is a numerical value somewhere on this card, so there's a one. Now, if my opponent, let's say he drew, and what he drew was this card, this card does have a three and an eight, sorry, a three and an eight. And the highest value on this card is an eight. So. He would go first in that case, assuming he drew that for his, his uh, determining who goes first. All right, so we know who goes first. We've got our hand. Now, the first thing you do after you determine dis, uh, unusables and duplicates is you go ahead and do the placing, or uh, uh, yeah, placing cards. You start with the one who goes first. So let's say he's going first. So he would go ahead and he can either go ahead and at this time concede on his turn, which, sorry, sorry. So what he can do uh, at this point is we do the, this, the placing now. So assuming he goes first, you're gonna take turns, each player placing one card. Now, during this time, you can also, you can either, you can place a card or you can go ahead and pass. Now the passing allows you to not have to place a card and puts that responsibility or opportunity back on the opponent during the seed part, during the seed phase of the turn. Now, if he decides to pass after you pass, guess what? Seeding is over. Anything not seeded has to stay in your hand and there you can't seed anything else. So usually people don't pass when they're seeding and they just put down whatever they can until both players are done seeding. That's usually what happens. So let's assume that no one passes. So it would be basically switching off, he'd start, and if he was gonna place one, he'd place one and come to me. Now, uh, placed characters can seed one of four different card types 
a max of one of each of those types can be seated on that character. So, I have a universe card, a special, and power card. So I have three different power cards. I have three different power, sorry, three different card types. So, this is what's gonna happen. So we're starting, he's seated, so I get to, I mean, he placed a card, I get to place a card. So, this card, since I don't know if I wanna use it this game, this turn, would be a good time to go ahead and place it because I might want to use it another round. Now, another reason why you want to see, let me explain this concept really quick so you know about turn flow. If you don't place a card and you don't use it, and uh, by the by the time the battle ends, then you're going to you're going to end up discarding whatever was not used into the discard piles. So the reason you'd want to place is to be able to have the option of using that card in a later turn. Um, that's the main purpose of placing a card. So, for example, so he placed, it's my turn. I would want to go ahead and place sp this teamwork card on spawn since it requires the seven fighting to use, and he has the seven fighting. And I don't know if I want to use it right now. I may or may not. It just depends on what my opponent uh, places and what happens in the turn. But I do want to place it because I don't know. So, I to place the card, you put it like this, sideways, face down, under the character that is having that card placed. So I place it, I pass it back to my opponent, I say it's his turn. He can place a card. Let's say he did place a card and it comes back to me. Then I would go ahead and place another card. Now normally, one per deck, which are the top line cards, and you can tell because it'll say one per deck on the bottom of the special there. One per deck, generally you want to go ahead and uh, place because they're really powerful and if you lose them from not from non-usage for some reason It's a waste of hand space basically. So this is Brainiacs. I'm going to go ahead and place this on Brainiac So I pass it back to my opponent now. He can go ahead and place or pass. Let's assume you passed Then at that point if he passes and uh, then I would basically be able to go ahead and uh, put another one down so I will go ahead and place Spawn Special right like that. Now, it doesn't matter the order. I could have placed the Special first and then the Teamwork card, but the point is that's generally the structure of how you place things. So I would place the Spawn card. Uh, I would pass it back to him, he could pass, and then it comes to me. Now looking at my hand here, uh, now there are different schools of thought in this game. Uh, one school of thought is place as much crap as you can and concede on the first turn or your opponent will most likely do that so just place everything you can. I like to go ahead and incentivize my opponent not to pass on, not to concede on the first turn and play out what I've got in my hand. And even if I, if I don't, then it's still not a real loss because as you can see, most of my hand here are power cards which will recirculate, which I'll get to through turn flow here. So I generally, at this point, I would not place. However, if you wanted to, you could. You could keep going until you had, you know, a majority of his cards placed. And again, uh, what it is, is every character, unless they have some inherent ability, which is little text that will be at the bottom of the character card, the very bottom here, that will give it some ability. Usually, uh, characters have the normal limit for placing. And that placing limit is going to be one special, one power card, one universe card, and one tactics card. Uh, and there are specials again, are, as I indicated in my other video, are these ones that have the character's name on there and, and their picture and the text and, and the name of the special. Power cards are again these cards with the value and the type on the two corners with just the picture. Um, and then universe cards are this teamwork card that I placed as one type. And you can see, let me bring that up. It's got universe right here on the right there, universe card, and then the teamwork card. Now, there are a lot of types of, and tactics are the same way. Tactic cards are the same way. They'll have tactics and then a subtype on the bottom. So it doesn't matter what subtype is for tactics, the universe you're limited to one tactic and one universe card usually. So with that being said, looking at my hand as you've seen for this turn flow, 
I would be done placing with my strategy. I'd be, okay, done. I'd say pass. So since he passed and I passed, then that ends the seed, the seeding phase. And then, and that's something both players get to do. Uh, again, every turn both players draw, and every turn both players are able to s place cards. Um, again, both players place, uh, both players draw. Now, the, this is where the initiative or whoever's going first matters, because now we're going to exchange blows. So what's going to happen is, assuming my character has, my opponent has four characters and the reserve, uh, we are going to go through this. All right. So on your turn, if you have the initiative to attack, you have the option to go ahead and do one of two things. You can play a card in your hand, or you can go ahead and... I'm uh, oh, sorry, one thing before we start, I'm sorry. After you discard the unusables and duplicates, and after you place, you're also supposed to venture, so I apologize. Okay, next step after you draw, place, uh, after you draw, discard, and place, the next step is is the venturing. This is the part that's like poker. A lot of people talked about that there's a sense of poker to the game. And this is where it really comes through. You're going to go ahead, and this is basically placing your bet, how well you think you're going to do for this battle. And I'm going to go ahead and, assuming that my opponent had roughly the same setup, generally, if it's a 50-50 chance, um, then I generally go to missions. Um, if I'm feeling really confident, maybe three or four. Uh, if I'm not really sure, but I, I want to take the chance and see what happens, then I'll do one usually. Um, uh, and you have to always, you have to always have to do at least one. Okay, so looking at this, assuming my opponent had the same setup, then I would go ahead and be like, okay, I'm going to venture um, I'm going to venture two because I, I feel good about it. So, you're going to take each mission that you venture and put it to the side of the reserve mission pile. So that little pile you start out with, with your mission cards, that's the reserve. So I'm going to venture two. That's what I'm doing with this game, with this round. Okay, now you have the option, I'm sorry. So now at this point, if you're starting, let's assume, uh, or if your opponent would start, he would look at his hand, look at what he's placed, what he's ventured, and decide to make a move. Now, uh, I know that we have the hypothesis of my opponent starting, let's assume I'm starting. So, uh, for my turn, after you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and take uh, a whack at your opponent. Generally, I like to start smaller to see what sort of tests the waters. So I would attack with this level three uh, power card at one of my opponent's characters. Now, the as I m mentioned uh, in my little video, again, again as I explained power cards, uh, the level is how high they have, the character has to be in the stat to be able to play it, and in that, uh, in that type. Multi-power cards are unique. They act as wilds. So I could have any of my characters attack with this card and because of what their stats are, uh, any character could play this. Um, now I could not attack with Professor X and say it's a three strength. I could not do that because he has only a one strength. Or I could not attack with that by Professor X and say it's a level three fighting attack because he has only two fighting. As you can see here, he has two fighting and one strength. So this level three multi-power, if I wanted to say it's a three fighting attack, I would not be able to attack with, uh, with Professor X with this card. I'd have to say it was spawn attacking, if I want to say level three fighting. Uh, if I want to say it's a level three strength, I could do Brainiac or spawn to attack with this. Um, but at the time that you attack with it, you do have to de declare a type. So let's say I'm having uh, Brainiac, uh, sorry, uh, let's say that Spawn is attacking using this as a three fighting. So he's going to attack, you see it's a three fighting, he has a chance to block. So let's assume that he does nothing to block it or avoid. Um, so. He, let's say he can't block it, that means he would take the hit and then he would throw an attack at me. 
And let's say he had a pretty good attack. He throws a level seven enemy of some type. Let's say he attacks Brainiac. So looking at my hand, he's attacking with a level six strength, for example. I mean, level seven, I said, sorry. So looking at my hand, I, I only have one option because I have a five, a six, and an eight. Level seven is higher than the five and the six. So I would have to block with some level eight energy. So I'd say I block with it. It would discard the attack, and then I would go ahead and discard this card into my power pack, or you know, my that's what it's called, the power pack. And that is the pile for all the power cards when you discard them. Now, that would then leave me open to my turn. I would then, usually at this point, I would go ahead and swing with my attack from spawn. Um, and it says on there, acts as a level seven strength deck. So I cannot block with this, I can only attack with it. So I want to hit the same person I attacked. I can see that he's already got one hit from the uh, from the uh, my first swing that he had to take, but let's say he's able to block it, so or avoid it, so he does. So that would be discarded into my discard pile. I mean, dead pile. I'm sorry. That's my dead pile. All right. So he wants to come at me again. So let's see. He comes after me. Um, he swings with let's say a little five. Now I have a problem because I don't want to use up my cards. Let's say, but you know, I'm going to say I will go ahead and block with my level five. He's attacking Professor X, so I have to declare a type, even though it can be any type, because it still has to match their grid. So I'm going to say I'm blocking with a five energy. So I use that as a five energy, negates his attack, leaves me with one card left. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go ahead and utilize a really hard attack to see if I can take someone out. So I'm going to attack using Spawn's card here. Attack with a six fighting. This requires a this requires a seven fighting. A seven fighting to use, which Spawn has. And then it acts as a level six fighting attack. So spawn attacks with a level six fighting. Okay, so that's what happens there. Now, uh, teamwork cards, uh, like I explained in my first video, you're gonna. This will allow me to have an immediate follow-up attack if I want um, before he gets his turn to throw at me, to, to attack me. So, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go. Mm, uh, I'll wait to see what he does with the six attack. Let's say that he blocks it. Okay, so I'll move it aside temporarily so that I keep in mind the bonus. So spawn attack, that means the teammate gets to attack either Brainiac or Professor X. The reserve, unless they have a card that says otherwise or, their, or an inherent ability that says otherwise, those people are not able to attack while in reserve normally. So I can't do a follow-up with him. So Brainiac or Professor X can attack as a follow-up. So I'm gonna attack with Brainiac as a follow-up. He's going to attack with the level six energy, and he's going to get a bonus of plus two energy for that follow-up attack because of the teamwork card, even though the first attack was blocked. So that makes this a level eight energy attack. Let's assume eight is a pretty high number, assume that he can't block it, so that would then hit, and it would, just like the other hit, stay there as a reminder that he has been hit for that battle. This would then be discarded, again, into the dead pile, 
and then I would go to his turn. Let's say that used up all of his cards. He would go ahead and pass, and then it would, and since I and then that means if he passes, it goes back to me. I have nothing I want to play um, because these two cards are more advantageous with specific scenarios. So. When that's done, I pass as well. That means the battle is over for this round. So these would go under the hero then. Well, I'm sorry. First, you go ahead and add up how much damage was done. And whoever did the highest amount, and this is purely value, not type, whoever did the highest amount would be the one who would win that, uh, win that round of combat. So he did none, because this is the temporary record. If you look at here, no hits. So you got zero on me versus me, I got six, seven, eight, nine. I got nine hits. So I won the venture total. That's what the term is for winning, getting the most hits off that tr battle is the venture total. Zero to nine, nine, I win. <clears throat> so I won that. These will go under the hero on their permanent record. And if these, assuming this was his character, it would go under like that. That would be their permanent record. All right, but that would go on, since I wasn't hit, this would go on to his character that I attacked on their permanent record. Then you take the mission cards that were ventured that round. As you can see here, that will be where I'm gonna go ahead and move these to the completed, which would be right here. So I moved my completed mission cards to here. That works. There you go. Completed mission cards goes to the completed. Round is over. If I had any cards that were in my hand that were not used for some reason, then those would be discarded as well when we both passed and when that round ended. So it's over. We now go to the new round. I draw eight new cards. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so I drew eight more cards, and you do through this. Well, we're going to go through the same exercise here. So uh, now, the th the, what's unique here is our event cards. Again, this one is a specific event card because of the specific mission set that I have, and this one is entropy field, and this says that no activator cards may be played this battle. Now, activator cards are uh, all are basically hero cards that are shuffled into your draw deck because you have a battle site, which I don't have, which you won't see, uh, but that's just something to be aware of. <laughs> but this will take effect. Usually people will just put this somewhere to remind themselves that it's an effect. I will just put it here for it, or just put it down here for now, so that they know that it's an effect. And then for the event card that you do play, and that's key, because I played an event card, I get to draw the one card to replace the one that I played. If you had drawn more than one event card, let's say I drew three event cards, I would still only play one and draw one card for that one that I play, and the others are discarded. So you don't draw cards to replace the ones that you don't use, all right? All right, so going through this exercise, I play that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I draw one card because of the entropy field that I played, and I go through the same scenario. So I go through, again, unusables. I have one, 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 eight, one, four, one, five, and one, seven. So again, because it's purely value for power cards to save the duplicates, and not type, I have no duplicates. My power cards are all non-duplicates. All right, so then I look at my specials, and again, specials and universe cards and uh, activator cards and so forth, uh, those are gonna be, not activators, I'm sorry, universe card, non-power cards are gonna be generally by exact duplicate, like I said. So, these are any heroes, but they're different, different specials, so they're not duplicates, and so is spawns. So again, I have a full hand, and this is always optimal. I have a full hand that has no duplicates, so I get to keep every card. Okay, 
Now the other thing to keep in mind is also anything that you've placed counts as a duplicate for future hands. So let's say, for example, let's, uh, let's say that I had actually seeded this five from the last round. Let's say I had put that on Professor X. Then in that case, this level five power card, any power card would be a duplicate and I would have to discard. If you have a duplicate, you have to discard from the hand, not what's placed. Placed cards, by rule, will always remain placed during the course of the, until they are forcefully discarded for some reason. So once it's placed, it's placed, it stays, and it's a, it's a, you can't go back on it. So you really want to plan and be careful what you place. But again, in this case, I did not, so I get to keep this five. All right, so I go through the same scenario. Now, I want to keep this because I'm probably going to avoid some attacks. I want to keep all of these. Uh, I'm probably going to attack with that. So the only one that I'd want to go ahead, oh, actually, uh, so that's actually when you look at unusables as well, sorry. All right, so looking at this, um, if the, my opponent had activators, then this card, this any hero, would be usable, but they. But let's assume that they do, so it is usable, so I'm not going to discard it. But if it was unusable, then this would be card would be discarded. We're going to assume that they uh, do have activator. No, actually, it's going to be. Uh, let's assume they do have activators. So in that case, I would keep it. And like I said, I'll probably use this during the course of the battle, this seven. So I'm going to go ahead and place this card on this battle site. Now, not all battle sites allow you to place a card. That's not the case for all of them. This one just happens to let you do that. There we go. But there we go. I drew, discarded duplicates, placed cards, and I'm ready to go for another round. And that's it. Uh, I look at my hand. I feel really good about my hand. I've had a good round. I'm very uh, positive about it. So I will actually venture four. One, two, three. Yeah, so I'm going to venture four because I am extremely confident about my hand. Now, something to keep in mind when you venture. For every mission venture beyond the first two, your opponent gets to draw a card. So that's something you have to keep in mind. Uh, they still are not able to use it if it's a duplicate or unusable. They'd still have to discard it, but it gives them a chance to get a potentially larger hand uh, if you're gonna be so bold as to you know, venture that. So we're gonna look at my hand and we're gonna go ahead and go through. Now uh, we'll run through the scenario. Uh, let's go ahead and start. Uh, whoever won the venture total last combat goes first on the next combat round. I won the venture total. Again, zero to nine, so I would go first. Now, I do want to play this through, but let's assume that I got a really bad hand, a hand that I did not want to deal with. Uh, then, in, um, she, uh, let's assume I have a hand that I did not want to deal with. If there's a hand I, that was bad and I didn't want to deal with it, then I could go ahead and just uh, place what I wanted. So let's assume that I am going to go ahead and concede because uh, it was a hand that I don't want to keep for some reason. Uh, then I would just place everything and then I would concede. You can concede at any point. Conceding is a great function. If you, even if it's during combat and it's your turn to, to throw a card out, you can concede rather than play a card. Um, or you can do it at the very beginning after you go ahead and place cards. If you concede, Sorry, if you concede, you're going to lose all cards that you ventured that round. So in exchange for being alive a little bit longer, you lose traction in your goals. Um, it's a trade-off. Sometimes you do want to do it, sometimes you don't. Alrighty. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play out. Let's assume I'm going to attack with this. Let's say that Professor X attacks with a one strength on that character. Let's say he blocks. Let's say he throws something big, like a level nine at me or something. So, 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and play this special. And this special says that Spawn or Teammate may avoid one attack of nine or less. Spawn has to play the card because it's his special, but it does say Teammate, so every other character besides the one that's, that that special is for would be referred to as a Teammate. So any of my other characters or he himself can use this card to avoid an attack. So let's assume it's a nine attack that he's throwing at me. I play this, I avoid the attack. Alrighty, so that's done. It's now my turn. I would go ahead and throw this card out. Uh, now, uh, this card, I, the person I've already attacked, so I'm gonna go ahead and attack with this level seven, strength attack, gamma terror. So I attack. The result is, with that gamma terror, okay. All right, so the gamma terror, uh, this is uh, uh, a death sentence. He's got to block it or KO. The reason being is that the characters have two ways of being KO'd. Uh, it's either going to be spectrum or uh, cumulative. Unless they have a card that's played that says otherwise, they're going to have a hit, hit total of 20 points that they can take. Now adding this up, three, six, and seven, I'm three short of accumulative. So by cumulative records, he's fine, and he can take the hit. Unfortunately, spectrum-wise, he will go. Spectrum meaning, means that you, they have three of the four types on the record, whether it's a permanent and or um, permanent and or hits to current battle record. Uh, so looking here, that's energy. This would be a strength if it hits, and then he has a multi-power. Multi-powers. Not only can you, in the turn that you use them, are effective because they can be whatever type you need at the moment, it's also useful for after the fact is hits. Because I can change this now, I'm attacking him at this moment with the seventh strength. I can right now at this moment say, this is now going to be an intellect or fighting, or even any of these other types. But to kill him, I need one of those two. So the multi-power hit, hit that's on his record, I'm gonna say, it's fighting. So, instantly he has a blocker or KO situation. He has to block it or he'll be killed. Um, so that is the extreme advantage with the multi-powers. They're extremely powerful cards, very nice cards. So this instantly creates, he has to block or die. Let's go ahead and say that he uh, is able to block it. So he is able to stop that. He decides to swing with an eight. Let's see, he's got a level eight character. He swings a level eight intellect at me. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and block. He swings at Professor X. So I'm gonna block with eight energy. So that would block his attack. Now it's my turn. Now it's my turn I've got his side. I, no one's made any leeway yet. Uh, no one's had any successful hits yet. So I can try and, and make things more on my side by playing one of these specials that are placed or another throw another attack from my hand. And I'm going to go ahead and, since I don't know if he had, oh, oh, he blocked the 70. He blocked with the 7. He attacked with the 8. He, so there's a good chance he can't block a 7, more than likely. So I'm going to attack this person with this intellect, and I'm going to change that to a... I change that to a strength. Say that's a strength hit. So again, he's got a block or die because of that the extreme usefulness of the multi power. So he's got a block or die. All right. So assuming he can't block that because of the fact that uh, he's used his big cards already, he blocked my seven strength already, and he attacked me with his level eight. So he doesn't have seven. So that hits. As a result, he's KO'd. And when they're KO'd, immediately we're going to take the cards that were on the permanent record and discard those, but we will keep on the field the hits to current battle. Because again, that is going to help us keep record and keep track of who won the venture total. So, so far in this battle, I am ahead by seven. All right, so he now swings. Let's say he throws a six at me. So I, unfortunately, don't have a four, I don't have a six, I have a four and a five, 
So unfortunately, I'd have to take that and let's see attack Professor X with it. So we'll, we'll pretend that this is the level six. Let's say he threw a six at me and he got me. So there's six now. So the record now is showing six to seven. Now we're really close. Now it, it's still anybody's game. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to edge out here. So I'm gonna throw a four and he's gonna go ahead and he had a four left. So he blocks it. Uh, and let's, I'm sorry, you have to clarify, sorry, this is a level four energy from Brainiac. Um, so I will do that. He blocks it, let's see, out of four, he's got one card left, let's say. And let's say it's a level one multi-power, he says a one energy attack from his character in the middle. Uh, let's say, and then I would block, because I don't want to take the hit, because multi-powers, as you've seen here, multi-powers are extremely powerful. So I'm going to block with a five any power. And uh, an any power, unlike a multi-power, any powers do not rely on type, purely value. So I don't, I don't call out a power type when I use an any power. It's purely value, purely accumulative purposes. So he attacks with the strength, I block with the five any power, it's blocked. So we look at the field, I, I actually, I, he attacked, and it's now my turn, I have nothing I wanna play, so I say pass, goes to him, let's say he's out of cards, or he has cards left that he can't play, he would pass. So now, this time we're looking at it. He did six, I did seven, I win by one point. So I win the, the adventure total again. So at uh, that point again, anything that's uh, on the hits to current battle for a character that's not KO'd would go on to the character. Anything from hits to current battle from the KO'd character would then also be discarded into the uh, power pack. Then uh, you move the mission missions accordingly, so that will go up. This event that was for this uh, battle that we just played, that's going to go into my KO'd heroes pile. And, and that would be the case, that would be the end of it, and we go on for another round. Now, a couple things to keep in mind um, is if you ever run out of cards in your draw deck, and you need to draw eight more cards, uh, need to draw a new hand, or draw cards for any reason, then you're gonna go ahead and reshuffle the power pack. This is your recirculating pile that you can always use no matter how many times you go through your draw deck. And that's the beauty of, of, um, of the system here, is that, and why power cards are so valuable, is because those will be continual resources at any point in the game, no, no matter how long the game goes. So, um, but that's a, a flow of the turn. I hope that gives you guys a better idea of how the turn flow goes on the game. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'll go ahead and um, you know try to do another, i uh, try to do a live game play with somebody, a friend of mine if I can. But I hope that helped. I hope those who are trying to get back into the game or new to the game, I hope that gives you an idea of how the turn flows and what happens. Now, uh, a couple things to keep in mind. There is a rule that you A, cannot simply pass if you can attack with a card that's in your hand. You never have to do anything with cards that are placed. So even though these are non-numerical attack cards, I don't have to play them. I can pass even if I have not used these because they are placed. But let's say I still had a seven, this seven inflict card in my hand and my opponent passed. I cannot just, or let's say, sorry, let's, uh, I'm sorry. Let's say he did his turn and it's my turn. We both have cards. He's got two, I don't know what they are. I've got this one, a level seven intellect. I can't pass. You can't just pass if you can attack. So because the fact that I have the seven intellect in my hand and it's my turn, you know, if I don't use one of these, then I'm going to have to use this and attack with it. So that's the thing to keep in mind is again, and then again, any cards you don't use or are not used that are not placed at the end of the turn are discarded before you draw a new hand. So um, just those things to keep in mind. 
Um, but again, I hope it was helpful. And if you have any questions, please uh, you know uh, chat me, uh, send uh, send me uh, a question. But uh, please like and uh, spread the word.